All right, everybody, welcome back to another x -Ball Gaming video. x -Ball here, and today, yes, we have some more salt for you in regards to 30 frames per second, in regards to Square Enix and more port begging. So we have some great examples here, and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to it. All right, so like I was saying, what we're going to do is go over to today's theme in regards to some 30 frames per second examples and, of course, some examples of Square Enix port begging. And we all know that that's mainly regarding Final Fantasy, the series in general. However, the first one, not necessarily a salty tweet or post. However, it just makes you kind of scratch your head here. Maybe I'm making too much of this. Let me know what you think. But... Jazz here real quick. Fallout 76 players. Is everything supposed to feel like a bullet sponge or am I doing something wrong? LOL. OL. I'm level 60 but didn't play since the game launched. Oh man. And uh, I, I know Jez was not the only one really hyping this up before and after the Bethesda acquisition. Uh, so the fact that he hasn't touched it since and now he is revisiting Fallout 76 and in what's going on with Fallout 76 is either you stay with this game pretty often, you're a frequent visitor as a player, or you just don't go back to it. Now, it sounds like he didn't go back to it. Why, why is he jumping into Fallout 76? This was, this was a post not that long ago. <laughs> he's, he's got examples of not even not even talking about first party games and being dry here. He had Dragon's Dogma 2 and other things still on the Xbox console and we're hopping over to 76 and you totally forgot how the game plays. Yes, most enemies are like a sponge, sir, because you are in game. Or I don't know what the you know the cap is at this point, but you're towards end game at the very least. And if you're not, you're climbing. It's always been that way. It's been meant to be kind of like Elder Scrolls Six ish. It's kind of meant to be more like MMO ish, and that's kind of what's going on. So I find that just a little bit of tone deaf. And the fact that he's revisiting Fallout seventy six while making the tweets and podcasts he's been doing something interesting. At least that's kind of what caught my eye. However, let's let's keep going here. So. Um, what I want to share as well is just a quick post. I know I kind of mentioned this before from Clobril, um, but here we have a quick post here in regards to the 30 frames per second again. And just want to kind of reiterate, hey, you know what? Wouldn't touch anything 30 frames per second, but now it's just the initiative that is just going to be the way of things, at least until the next Xbox Series console. So Clobril... Uh, are you going to be a man of your word? Are you going to actually play these games at 30 frames per second, or are you not? We're all waiting on bated breath to see if that definitive word and stance from you actually follows suit, or if that actually follows through. So, kind of keep my eye on this, and just didn't want the audience to forget about this too, because I'm going to be keeping an eye on when Hellblade 2 does arrive. So, we'll see what happens there. Now... Let's head on over to something that I think is great here. Um, man, oh man, oh man. Gaming Profit NP NYC again, right? Oh, Microsoft is moving full speed ahead on its next generation console, coming sooner than you think, versus Sony is releasing a half-step mid-gen console that uses current-gen CPU, and tech experts say it's not capable of running GTA 6 at 60 frames per second. Okay, who did it best? Microsoft or Sony? He posts, Microsoft moving full speed from IGN, and then also IGN stating that PS5 Pro, which isn't a next-gen console, possibly not able to do 60 frames per second. So now we're back at the 60 frames per second speak here. So wh what is it? Are, are we sticking with 30 frames per second is okay or not okay? In my opinion, I'd rather have 60 frames per second. It's difficult for me to play games in 30 frames per second, even Dragon's Dogma 2. I do think it suffers in a way when you are so used to 60 frames per second. Does that mean the game's broken or anything? No, it certainly is playable, but I'm not going to sit there and put out those keywords such as cinematic. It makes it more cinematic and blends this and that. I'm not going to do that. I will always choose 60 frames over 30. However, if you don't have the choice to do that in a game you still want to play, you're still going to play it. You expect more. It depends on the visuals, all this stuff. However, again, what's going on here? Then, of course, General MLD has to shovel in here. 
Shows they pulling a 360 and releasing before the PS6, they playing by the rules, not Sony. Good. Seems so odd. They polling. They playing by their rules. You know, like, unless it's more of a redneck tone, perhaps? I don't know. Regardless, whatever he is stating here, you know, it's it's also a moment of concession. It's, it's a concession of defeat, conceding themselves. That... This generation for Xbox, as far as hardware is concerned, has been a total flop. What are we doing here? We're pulling back. They're admitting defeat, waving the white flag. We better uh, put all our baskets into the next generation console here because we failed. We failed. It's okay. The shills are here. The shills are here to back it up. Let's move forward. Xbox Series S and X didn't happen, don't worry. It doesn't matter that the PS5 has pretty much outperformed most games on their platform, as opposed to our, quote, more powerful Xbox Series X and the fact that the Series S was still a flop. And between two SKUs, we still couldn't even come close to beating out the competition of the Switch or the PlayStation 5. So let's just move forward with that. Ridiculous. And again, what are we dealing with the 30 frames versus 60 frames? Pick your lane, Prophet. Pick your lane. You look like a damn moron all the time. Now, we have to go over real quick before we get to the bread and butter of this other person here, but Xbox Series XS. Now, this rumor's been floating around like I've been saying. Square Enix exclusivity deals should come to an end. Unsure if it's after, if it's after June's showcase or in 2025. Hmm. Where did this rumor come from? It came from a bait and click person on the post that just creates stuff on a whim. He just posts. There's no evidence or anything for it. So the fact they're running with this, it's they don't know a time frame. This also is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I'm not saying that because I want Square Enix to stay with Sony and PlayStation and that's how it should be. No. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that that's no truth of the matter whatsoever. If you have some evidence to back that sort of stuff up, by all means, go for it. This just makes you pathetic, and you're currently trying to port bag all sorts of titles over to you because you're salty that it's not over on your platform, which most of the platform holders do not play those type of games in that community. It's just been shown and proven over and over and over again. How many people are playing Nino Kuni? How many people are playing Persona as opposed to other platforms? It's not much. My goodness. So, that being said, uh, you know, just to kind of tailor off of this, I want to share this quick graphic. I thought this was great. We're going to kind of back up a little bit here in regards to the whole 30 frames, 60 frames, and new generation stuff. As you can see, new year. Cue the fake articles about how well Xbox did. Or even rumors in this case, like we're talking about. Say how well we're doing without giving true numbers. The only numbers they get is from like VG charts and stuff that gives estimated totals, which are usually off by a little bit. Not necessarily their fault. That's what they have to work with. No games. For the most part, no. Especially when they're going to be eventually going third party with the games and going to other platforms. You have Hellblade 2 coming up. Indiana Jones later. Avowed later. How long are those going to be on those those systems? So what's what's the point? We already went over that the last video, right? It used to be wait for E3, but E3 is no more. It's no more. So what we have is the Xbox Showcase. Wait for the Xbox Showcase. They're going to bust some news, the Square Enix rumor, or they're going to bust out some great games and other stuff here. Just wait for the Xbox Showcase. That's the new narrative every time. Then you release copy and paste Forza Holiday. Holiday time. That's correct. Full circle. New year. <laughs> All that stuff. So what's going to blow everybody away? What's going to be that game that blows everybody away on Xbox? We'll have to wait and see because that's always the wait and see game. Just wanted to share that all with you there, of course. Now let's get back to the Square Enix stuff here. So what's great is we had good old Kareem here. The biggest fraud, the biggest shield that we have out there. We've talked about this guy so many times. Kareem. If it's true that Phil Spencer is trying to work out a deal or acquisition of Square Enix, then I believe this would be the greatest thing for gamers. Square Enix needs a lot of support because their games are amazing. It will also show, also end the stranglehold exclusivity that Sony has and blah blah blah, and he has all this stuff, right? Um, it's not a stranglehold. No one's forcing 
the company of Square Enix or the CEOs or figureheads to make these deals with Sony. They have the biggest platform shares across the board, especially when it comes to RPGs or JRPGs in general, right? That's just common sense. So let's not put words and other things into people's mouths. Now, what's great is he got community noted. The account that posted, and this is what I talked about before, this tweet is known as a bait account, which is true. We're talking about Goat Gaming. I've talked about him multiple times on this channel. Garnering clicks and response for engagement. Both accounts have been known to spread lies and rumors and have been community noted. Multiple times. This isn't his first. Again, he has been absolutely embarrassed and went on a blocking spree when Jeff Keighley and Tom Warren themselves have called him out for previous bullcraft that he's been doing. On top of this now, as you can see, he then boasts about it all. My viral post got Square Enix to trend. Yes, it's all him. Because you're spreading lies. Smiley face with embarrassed or happy emoji, whatever you want to call it. I love Square Enix. So much that we've proven before in past videos that you don't touch any of the Square Enix games on your Xbox platform or PlayStation platform, but you lie, have never shown your Nintendo Switch completion status to anybody when you boast for it, and saying you played the Final Fantasy games over there. Sure, pal. All right. Can't wait for future announcements. <laughs> in the same breath, in the same breath, on another one, he gets very upset about the community notes portion. Community notes, he has tagged up there or flagged up there, right? The person who community noted my opinion-based post turns out to be extremely biased. Surprise, surprise. Because you're not. So I don't know if this person that community noted it, I don't think it's one person, it's multiple people that did and it gets uploaded and all this stuff. They don't community note any PlayStation-based accounts. Are the PlayStation-based accounts lying and running with false narratives? You idiot. Because my posts favor Xbox, they have attempted to community note me and failed multiple times along with the main Xbox account itself and others. No, they haven't failed. It's come back and it's still on there this last time that I checked right before recording, as well as other posts of yours that did not go away, especially the Jeff Keighley and Tom Warren stuff that called you out and you got community noted. All right, this is a clear violation of community notes, tags them, and this is why the original community note was removed after coming back again. This is a clear attempt to attack, deplatform, and demonetize me. So he's in it for the money, he's in it for the garnering, he's in it for the clicks, the engagement, you name it. So without realizing it, he outs himself in this whole landscape of everything that he does without knowing it. And then he considers to play the victim and whine about it. You're whining because you are getting demonetized. You're trying to make money from this. You buy followers, you buy followers on YouTube, bots on YouTube, bots on Twitter, X, whatever you still want to call it. That's just how it is. You are the biggest fraud and shill and everybody needs to know it. If you have any sheep still following you after this point, that's pathetic and embarrassing, truthfully. Now that being said, let's lean on over to something here from our great neighborhood and recurring spotlight guest, Colt Eastwood himself. I want you to take a look at this video right here. This is the last thing we'll say about, about Hellblade. Games Radar, I'm pretty sure it's them. They previewed Hellblade and one of the statements from their journalists was this Hellblade 2 is so great that everyone deserves to play this game. This game needs to come to all the platforms. And I thought, oh, geez, Mag, uh, I, I've got two approaches to this. Like, uh, don't you realize that this game is on almost every screen except for a Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 5? Like, don't you know that the world, the majority of the world plays not just on a PlayStation 5, like the, the pie graph is there. And then the other thing, Mag, I'm gonna have you comment on this. Why aren't they saying this about PlayStation's biggest games? I didn't hear someone say, man, Spider-Man 2 is so good, everyone should play it. I'm not asking them to say it should be on Xbox, but it's only on a PS5. And I'm like, why aren't you saying every, this game's so good, everyone should play The Last of Us? Or I don't, I don't know, Dot. All right, so like we see here, he's questioning and wondering why they think Hellblade 2 needs to be everywhere. Well, I don't know why you don't understand this, but you have this thing called Game Pass. 
it's on there day one, day and date. How much money is this making? Who's going to sit there? Most of the folks that own and are hardcore Xbox fanboys, again, have been sheepishly pushed into renting your games all the time. 90% of the games you play are off of Game Pass. Why, if you're already sub to Game Pass, are you going to go ahead and then buy Hellblade 2 when it's an 8 hour game that you can complete in a weekend? If not get all achievements, I haven't seen the list, but possibly all the achievements within a week. Why would you buy that? Is that something you're going to play over and over and over and over again? No, this is not an open world game. This is not going to be a genre defining story like The Last of Us was. Alright, it's just not. So, <laughs> that in turn, is going to make it question why it wouldn't go to other platforms to make more money. It has to happen. That is exactly why. There's more platform holders of PlayStation out there, so if you make it go to other platforms as well, you're going to get that money. That's the way to do it. They pigeonhole themselves, like I've said multiple times. They've done it. Simple as that. Let's look no further than what uh, Digital Foundry here says about it on top of what I said. Here you go. I think Sony has actually set a good precedent at this gen. They, they have stuck with in-house technology and looking at it, it seems as if every single first party game they've shipped on PS5 runs at 60 frames per second or has a mode that's 60 and some go above that even. Uh, I, so I have to give them credit to that. That's actually, that sets a pretty great precedent. Um, right. We haven't seen that on the Xbox. They, they, most developers have opted not to take that approach. And I think the thing about Hellblade 2 that we need to realize... Simple as that, Colt. You know the answer. I know you're thick-headed. But you know the answer. Stop being such a shill. Stop saying ignorant stuff when you know the answer to it. You can talk all you want in your podcast. But the answer remains the same. Xbox has pigeonholed themselves with Game Pass. That's why we see the game starting to go over to all platforms. Welcome to your future. New hardware or not, welcome to the future of Xbox. That being said, folks, we'll wrap up the video here. I appreciate everybody sticking around, uh, watching the entirety of it. I really appreciate everybody's support. At this point in time, we are at 607 subs. Or I'm sorry, 1,607 subs out of that 200 or 2,000 sub goal. My gosh, all these numbers, I can't even talk about them. Uh, you guys have been phenomenal. Thank you so, so much for your support. It helps out so much, and I, I'm ever so thankful, so thank you. Uh, that being said, definitely be sure to like and comment. That does help out the algorithm, if you would, for the videos. And, of course, if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing, helping out a small content creator like myself. So thanks again, and we'll see all of you the next time on the next video. And just remember, don't be a salty batch. Take care.